How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. Um, it is currently five past six in the morning and I am driving on my way to work. Uh, today's video, I thought I would show you my classroom a little bit and I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that I've started to do in my classroom in terms of displays, in terms of resources, um, to make my classroom uh, an enjoyable place to be in first and foremost to save time I know I've done videos on saving time as a teacher in the past um, and ultimately to have the best possible environment for the children that I teach so that could include like I say having a space that the children are excited to be in having a space that is beneficial for their education um, and just having a positive learning environment for them for them to work in so that is what the purpose of today's video is. Like I said, I'm gonna take you into my classroom. I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I've started to do. And these are little things that I've magpied um, over the last couple of years. By no means am I saying that you have to or you should do these. These are just things that I have found to be really useful and that I have found children to respond really well to. Now, if you're watching this video and you're a teacher and you have got some really good ideas and you have seen um, the, some of the things that you've got going on in your classrooms, are really beneficial and that your children have responded well to them please leave a comment down below because sharing is caring and all that as teachers we need to constantly be looking at really good practice and that's the whole point of this channel is to really support the environment so that is what we are going to be doing today like i said i'm on my way to work and when i get there i will show you the classroom if you are new to the channel guys and you haven't already done so please consider subscribing smash that like button and as i said if you've got any ideas pop them in the comment section below let's get into it So I am now in my classroom. I need to do the setup of the morning like normal, put the work up on the whiteboard so that the children know what they're doing, get my laptop out, look at any emails, check all of the notes that I need to check, print things off ready for the start of the day. It is currently 6.24 a.m. I've got about 30 minutes until um, the staff all come together for a, a joint breakfast, which has been a new new thing since the sort of the after Eid, which has been lovely. We will kind of come together, share some breakfast, have a chat about how the week's been, things like that. Um, so I've got 30 minutes to get all that done. And obviously in that time, I'm also gonna show you some of the exciting things I've got going on in the classroom. Yeah, let's get the laptop out. So the first thing that I have incorporated into the classroom recently has been these mass challenges. They go from super spicy all the way down to mild and they're just little additional challenges linked to the topic that we're currently studying. So if I pull one out from the spicy, we are looking at money and so there's a little table there and they have a question about the table. They have to add up or subtract the costs of the money um, and they have to answer it, just explain what the, the challenge shows, explain the method that they would use. So what this means is it saves me time because if I've got children in here that are that sort of high, have that higher learning potential, they are higher ability. Um, if they get through the work that I've set them, they can then come over, pick their own challenges, use that resourcefulness, um, and they can continue and extend their learning. And again, it goes all the way down to mild because even mild children, those that, that maybe struggle a little bit more with the concepts, they still need to be um, pushed when it comes to comprehension. So again, in here, we will have some slightly different challenges that are more appropriate. So it's still a table, but the question is asking slightly less. So I found these are really useful. They are here and um, easily accessible for the children to use. On the topic of maths, and whilst I am by my maths working wall, over my shoulder here, I have got a challenge card. 
Now, this is a daily maths challenge, and basically it's just a whiteboard that I've pinned to the working wall, and every single day I will write a long challenge on it. Now, the challenge isn't specifically there for the whole class necessarily. Um, it is there for those children that want that extra challenge, that, that enjoy the excitement of trying to complete something. And if they get it right, they get a house point. Now, this is just something that I've done to excite those that are really sort of mathematical and they have a mathematical mind and they want to be challenged in maths. Sometimes I write some really challenging maths problems on there just to see how they respond to it. And like I say, if they give it a good go, they show they're working out. And if they get it right, then they earn a house point. So again, that's just another little exercise that the children can do. It's not specifically linked to the maths lessons, but it's just a nice little activity that they can come in and make a start on. Even first thing in the morning, if they've got a spare moment in the day, they can have a go. And then I've got a little thing of paper there that they can use, they can show they're working out. Now, maths can't take all the glory here, so we are now onto the English working wall, and this is more of a time-saving teacher tip. Time-saving teacher tip, yeah. Um, and this is also the working wall. Now, I have done two things that I have found really save me time, look really good, and um, are very effective. The first one is when you are writing on the whiteboard, Rather than rewriting your notes, take pictures. So these are actually pictures I've taken with an iPad that I've then blown up and printed on A3, and I've then cut them out. So these save time, they save energy, and it's exactly what the children have seen on the board. So you are modeling in multiple ways. Tip number two, handwritten notes on the working wall. Now, this does a couple of things. First of all, it shows the nice cursive handwriting that you can, you were expecting of the children. Secondly, it saves you time because you're not having to go up and type things off like these learning objectives. Um, you can do it on different cards. You have different options to make the font, your, your writing size bigger, smaller. You can then even identify glorious mistakes by if, for instance, you've deliberately spelt a word wrong, you can refer to that. You can refer to corrected words and so on. So I find this really useful. I find it's quick, it's easy. Um, it looks quite nice because it's not all sort of text like this um, and you can make it really interesting to look at. So try a little bit more of handwritten text, it's the way forward. Now sometimes it can be really challenging to reiterate the expectations of the class. So what I've got above my whiteboard here, I have got my, my class's expectations. These are things that are very visible, they're right at the front of the class and it means that my children constantly have that reminder of what is expected. And this is minimum, this is things like using rulers, this is things like making sure they're writing in cursive where they can write in paragraphs. And I will refer back to these. So when we're looking at work, when I'm engaging with a child, when we're doing some feedback, um, I can refer to those very quickly. So those are sort of the expectations for them to achieve really well. So when children first come in in the morning, sometimes, depending on how their evening's been, uh, settling into the day can be quite challenging. And I always find that having something, an activity for the children to get on with straight away, as soon as they get in, they've got something to focus on, really, really helps. Because otherwise, you end up with children wandering your classroom, not really sure what they're doing. They don't have a focus, and I think that's really important. So I have started to put up something that I refer to as morning activities. Now, these offer multiple options for the children, so they don't have to do one specific thing every day if they don't want to. Sometimes I mix it up and make it a little bit more exciting, so I'll put like yoga poses on there for them to focus on and things like that. Um, but I just find it's a really useful and quick and easy way of getting the children engaged immediately. And you can put things like math challenges on there, writing challenges linked to the learning you've already done, and it just helps consolidate learning and it keeps focus. Let's have a look. So this is today's, for example, it's quite fun. We've got some checking your work to look back over. We've got some times table practice. I'll often put a times table rock star thing up there as well. We've got some spellings because today we have our spelling test um, and it is different every single week. So if I go back to yesterday's, again, the same thing applies. Okay, so Thursday, we've got some sentences. I've put an interesting math challenge on there. The day before, if I click back again, We've got some reading, we've got an act of kindness, write a nice letter to someone, we've got some yoga poses. So I will drag this across, I will put it and enlarge it on the screen so that when the children come in, they can look at what their activities are for the morning and they can make a start. Another time-saving tip, login details, times table rock stars. Now I've created this as a little bit of a display. I've got some funky rockers going on there with all of their login details. And the children can get come in, they can get their iPads. The iPad tray is there. 
uh, and they can come in, they can get their iPads, they can come over, they can log themselves in, and straight away they are practicing their times tables, something that they really enjoy, um, and it just saves me a lot of time faffing around trying to find login details and stuff like that. Make a little bit of a display out of it. You could also do um, sort of a leaderboard to see which children are sort of scoring the highest um, and, some, and, and stuff like that. I haven't, I've just left it as that um, for my own reasons, but that's another option. Another thing that I have uh, made the most of, and you'll only be able to do this if you have nice big windows, is use a glass window pen. So this is, um, it's a bit like a, I don't know, crayon, I suppose. And it allows you to write on windows, you get a damp cloth and it wipes straight off. What that means is you are basically doubling your working wall size. So you can't really see it very clearly because of the light outside, but up on the window here, I have got the start of a word map for our theme which is looking at Heracles and the Hydra um, and so I can write on it with this I can get different colors of these I can also give them to children to go up and write on and it's actually a little bit more exciting for the children to go up and write on a window with a crayon um, especially at the year group I'm in I'm in year four so it's quite an exciting thing for them to go up and do it's a bit different from writing on the whiteboards and it's just a bit engaging and again you are increasing your working wall space and your learning potential so have a look into them. And the final one from this video, because there's lots of little tips and tricks and things I've shown you. Um, and also I'm running out of things to show you in my classroom now is having walls of celebration. Okay, this is the children's environment. We need to celebrate their successes. We need to celebrate their efforts. So I've got a couple of things on the board that the children have really input to. Now, the first thing is pictures. I've got pictures all over this classroom. Obviously, I'm not gonna show you them, but I've got pictures of the children doing things, having fun, enjoying their learning. But I've also got certificates and I've got the children's aspirations for the year. Really nicely and clearly, it's a bit of a celebration wall and it just kind of is something that they can look at and reflect upon. Here are their Golden Book Awards. These are awarded to the children for um, completing something really good. Um, I am the one that has submitted them and then the headmaster awards them and it's a big ceremony. They get the name in the Golden Book and they're really happy. So I put those up on the wall. Um, there was a, a little thing at the top that explained that this was the sort of 4F celebration, but I think with the aircon it's fallen off, unfortunately. And then over here are their amazing aspirations. So this is the aspirations for the year. We completed these at the beginning of the year. They can refer to them, I can refer to them, and they can see how they've improved and met their personal targets. So there we go, guys. That is today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. As I said, if you have any ideas, anything that you have done in your classroom that uh, have been successful, that the children have responded well to, please comment down below. Let's share the ideas. Let's magpie um, and let's make our classroom environment really, really uh, a positive place for the children to work in. Right, I'm going to stop talking now and I will see you in the next one. Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Please like this video if you find it useful. Comment down below. Follow me over on Instagram. Do all that good stuff and I will see you next time. See you later, guys. Peace out.